Well, Mr. President, I stand here as the Chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee to talk about one of the greatest threats facing our nation, and that is climate change. Dangerous climate change, or you could call it climate disruption. And it seems like the only people that don't get it, you know, are, are members of Congress. They don't get it. Last week, I talked about a front page story in USA Today that highlighted the impacts of climate change unfolding around us. The story that I talked about is the first in a year-long series called Why You Should Sweat Climate Change. Let me repeat it. Why You Should Sweat Climate Change. Well, everyone else is sweating about it, but not here, not in this Senate, not in this Congress. Now, since last week, additional information concerning climate change has been released that I want to talk about today, because I want to build a record in this United States Senate on an issue that threatens the very lives of our grandchildren. Senate will be in order. Senator from California. Thank you. It is hard to imagine that this country is facing a question of our own survival, and so few people seem to care about it. And so I'm going to talk about another report. A study published last week in Science reports that average global temperatures were higher in the past decade than over most of the previous 11,300 years. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that for any colleague who might be listening. Average global temperatures were higher in the past decade than over most of the previous 11,300 years. But yet the Senate does very little. Senator Sanders and I have a, a bill, a very important bill, to put a price on the pollution that is causing the climate to disrupt and to change. And let me just say, we don't have a slew of sponsors. Now, the lead study of this science report that said average global temperatures were higher in the past decade than over most of the previous 11,300 years, he is a paleoclimatologist at Oregon State University. Here's what he said. What's different is the rate of change. What we've seen over the past 150 years is much greater than anything we saw in the past 11,000 years. And that's Sean Marcotte, PhD, the lead author of the study. Some people may ask, why is this study important? What does it mean for our kids? What does it mean to our grandkids? Well, let's go to another quote. If the scientists' forecasts are correct, the planet will be warmer in 2100 than it has been for 11,300 years. The scientific evidence continues to mount. Study after study after study has concluded that the planet is warming and the impacts have already started. But yet, the only place that doesn't seem to get this message is right here in Washington, D.C., not at the White House. They get it. President Obama understands it. That's why he worked with us to increase fuel economy to keep that carbon pollution out of the air from automobiles, and we're moving to 55 miles per gallon standard. That is going to help, but that is not enough. We need to put a price on pollution. So polluters turn away from dirty energy and turn toward clean energy. That will save us from most of the ravages of climate. But the window is closing on the time frame because impacts have already started. Another study released last week by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, found there was a dramatic jump in the amount of carbon dioxide in the air in 2012. It was the second highest one-year increase since 1959, Mr. President. 
When record keeping began, the increase in carbon in the air is yet another signal that scientists' prediction about climate change and, and a uh, climate disruption, those predictions are coming true. We've seen it. We've seen the devastating and far-reaching consequences of unchecked climate disruption in the extreme weather events. The Government Accountability Study, the GAO, now they are not partisan, they are not ideological. They recently released a report entitled 2013 High Risk List that discusses how climate disruption and extreme weather events threaten our nation. This is the General Accounting Office. Mr. President, we, the taxpayers, support the General Accounting Office. They are nonpartisan. They are straight from the shoulder analysts. They say climate change could threaten coastal areas with rising sea levels, alter agricultural productivity, and increase the intensity and frequency of severe weather events such as floods, droughts, and hurricanes. Now, this is the GAO. I guess they looked out their window in addition to looking at the numbers. Anyone who looked out their window who lived in the area of Superstorm Sandy understands this. Climate change could threaten our coastal areas, already doing it. I don't know if anybody saw those homes being removed from a beach in Massachusetts. Gorgeous homes. They were there for, for a while. Gone, because the ocean was going to envelop them. According to the GAO, extreme weather events have cost the nation tens of billions of dollars already just over the past decade. So as these extreme weather events increase, so will the cost to American taxpayers. This is more from the General Accounting Office. This is not from the EPA. This is not from NOAA. This is not from Barbara Boxer. This is not from Bernie Sanders. This is not from Sheldon Whitehouse. This is not from the Environment Committee. This is from the GAO. The impacts and costliness of weather disasters resulting from floods, drought, and other events such as tropical cyclones will increase in significance as what are considered rare events become more common and intense due to climate change. You know, when I started in this work a very long time ago, we talked about the 100-year flood, and we could protect against that 100-year flood. Now, as Governor Cuomo has stated eloquently, we're just seeing those 100-year floods every couple of years. Now, taxpayers are on the hook for the devastation caused by extreme weather events like Superstorm Sandy. And because the federal government owns buildings across the nation, insures property and crops, and provides disaster assistance, let's see what else the GEO says. Climate change impacts pose significant financial risks for the federal government which, by the way, means us all, taxpayers, which owns extensive infrastructure, insures property through federal flood and crop insurance program, provides technical assistance to state and local governments, and provides emergency aid in response to natural disasters. So our federal finances are significantly at risk. There is a growing recognition that the cost of inaction could be greater could be greater, and given the government's precarious fiscal position, increasingly difficult to manage given expected budget pressures. Mr. President, we're going to see a couple of different budgets emerge, one from the Democrats in the Senate, one from the Republicans in the House. I can tell you they will have different visions for America. One budget, the Democratic budget, is going to get to a deficit reduction but it will invest in our people. It will say to the very wealthiest, you know you have to do your share. And we'll see our kids being able to get head start in education and job training. And we'll see the environment being cleaned up. The other budget is going to be hurtful, is going to be painful. Because the other budget, the Republican budget, is going to protect and defend one group of people in this country, and that's the wealthy few. And therefore, there won't be resources to do what we have to do. 
And we're going to see cutbacks in the kinds of things we need to do to make sure that we plan for this extreme weather, to make sure that we can avert this climate disruption by investing in clean energy. So, Mr. President, the GAO report is clear. Unchecked climate change comes at a very high price, but that's what's happening in this Congress. The President is doing his best. Some of us over here are pushing hard. In the House, they passed a bill. We fell short because of a filibuster. We had 54, we needed 60. So a price on carbon never happened. And as a result, we're seeing hotter days, hotter climate, more and severe extreme weather. And we need to take these steps. We need to make the investments. So as these budgets come down, let's take a look at it. And I can assure you, when we have a travesty and a tragedy like Sandy, Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy, we're never going to turn away from our people, whether it happens to your state, uh, Mr. President, because of severe drought or uh, certain types of, uh, of uh, pest, pests that arise because of the changing the weather. And we know what happens. It's happening all over the country. It could happen anywhere. Fires raging, droughts raging, extreme weather, snow when you never expect it, torrents of rain that you can't even believe are happening, and yes, these high temperatures. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren not to turn away. Now, let's see what the GAO tells us. This is a call from them to us. Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening who gets to vote in this Senate? This is what the GAO, sa GAO says. They call for, quote, a government-wide strategic approach with strong leadership and the authority to manage climate change risks that encompasses the entire range of related federal activities and addresses all key elements of strategic planning. Now, that's a lot of words for something simple. What the GAO is saying to us is, you guys better act, because this thing is getting out of control. So every time I get a chance on a Monday evening, I intend to come down to the floor, take a few minutes to build a case, and I hope an indisputable one, that we put a price on carbon pollution, just like we made sure that other pollution had a price on it, whether it was a regulatory price, whether they had to go buy scrubbers to keep dangerous pollutants out of the air. Carbon pollution is dangerous. It's putting our people at risk. But you wouldn't know it from what's happening around here. And I want to close by thanking my colleague, Bernie Sanders, who I'm so proud to serve with. I'm the chairman of that Environment Committee, and he's a great member. And together, we've come up with an excellent bill, and the bill takes the proceeds of that carbon tax and invests it in our people, invests it in clean energy, makes sure that our middle class and working poor have the funds they need to pay the higher prices of electricity in the early years, and we will create jobs. And let me tell you, there is no question what is happening to our coastal states. There is no question what is happening to our farms. There is no question what's happening to our natural resources. There is no question what is happening to our species. Do you know scientists predict that 50% of God's species will be gone if we do nothing? So when people stand here and laugh off this notion that we are facing severe climate change, I tell them, look at some of the church groups that are supporting us. They've come together. They are with us. They understand that God's creation is at stake. There is no doubt about it. And we are the stewards of this environment, and we are the ones who are supposed to protect it. But yet, in this United States Senate, it's shrugged off as if it's a nothing burger. And I have to say to the young people who are here, whose future is at stake, who want to enjoy the same opportunities that my generation enjoyed. 
I got to tell you, we owe it to them to do better. And with this GAO report, this nonpartisan report telling us clearly that we better have a government-wide strategic approach with strong leadership, I got to say, I hope we have more people on this floor showing that kind of leadership because the clock is ticking. And I would say to every member here, we have old ones and young ones and middle ones. You're here at the moment that we can do something. You're here at the moment we can still do something. The Bush administration wasted eight years going to the courts arguing that the Clean Air Act did not cover carbon pollution. Eight years they did nothing. And finally, the Supreme Court ruled five to four. Yes, of course it covers carbon pollution. And God bless the Obama administration for moving forward in every way they can, unfortunately, without us at this point. And I could tell you, we will be judged harshly, harshly, if we turn away from this. We are here now. We didn't choose this time to be born. We didn't choose the fact that this is an issue that's upon us. But I don't know what's going to wake up this place, but I'm going to do my best to ring the bell uh, as often as I can. And I thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. President. And I yield the floor.